Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ghafiruhu wa na'minu bihi wa natabakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlilhu fala hadiya lah wa nashhadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في مكان ثاني يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا صدق الله العظيم ان شاء الله in uh, today's khutbah i will talk about few ayat from surah al-a'la this surah which is Recited quite a bit in Surah Al-Jum'ah as well as the, the prayer of the Eidain. Because of Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is reported that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite Sabbih isma Rabbik al-A'la and halataka hadith al in Surah Al-Jum'ah and Salat Eid, and then the Zahra report even talks about that, that he would, if the uh, Salat Eid, the Eid falls on the day of the Jum'ah, and Rasulullah performed Jum'ah and Eid both, then he even recited these ayat, these surahs in both the Salahs as well. So it's a reminder for us, in many cases, on a weekly basis, or more sometimes, and this surah, Surah Al-A'la, it is a Makki surah, and it is one of the earliest surahs of the Makkan era that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And according to the order of revelation, the surah is the number eight surah that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Makkah. Meaning it is one of the very early surahs so that shows that the, the tone of the surah is clear about that. And uh, the surah was revealed right after Surah to Taqweer that we talked about in past two Jum'ahs. The important thing to remember when we are going over these surahs sometime in the order of revelation and understanding that this, these surahs that we are talking about are, for example, the Makki Surahs, that has an important lesson for us to remember, because today we are living in the era when Islam is not implemented anywhere in the world. And in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the only time that we see that Islam was not implemented was the time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Mecca. Hence, our methodology or our way to bring back Islam in our lives have to come from the Meccan era of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, this is true that the whole Islam have been, have been uh, 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 revealed now already but that doesn't mean that the method of implementing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes. Meaning when the, when the society is in the state of kufr. Meaning they are implementing the rules other than the rules of Allah azza wa jal everywhere in the world. So we come into the same situation as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was in the time of the Mecca. And after he migrated from Mecca to Medina, this is where... 
the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal was implemented as a state. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he became a ruler over there. Hence it is important for us to know the order of revelation. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, one of the famous scholars of the Qur'an, he said, reported by a Suyuti about Abdullah bin Abbas, that he said, that anyone who does not know the difference between the Makki and the Madani ayat, he does not have a right to do the tafsir of the Qur'an or the commentary of the Qur'an. Because you may end up taking the ayat in the wrong order or wrong understanding and you apply it in the wrong reality. Hence it is important to know that and we can learn a lot of lessons. So now, going back to the surah, Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-A'la, بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم سبح اسم ربك الأعلى Allah Azza wa Jal here is telling us glorify the name of your Rabb the Most High. There was, a, there was a norm among the Arabs that when they wanted to glorify their deities, like Hubal, one of the gods they used to worship, they would say, U'lu Hubal, U'lu Hubal. That's what they used to say. As one of the hadith that talks about Ghazbatul Uhud, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, after the battle was over and he was following with the Sahaba, the, 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 the army of the Quraysh or the Meccans. And the conversation that was happening between Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Sahaba and Abu Sufyan, the leader of the Meccan army at that time, and he was saying, Ulul Hubal, Ulul Hubal, that he was saying that uh, high is the God Hubal. And when Rasulullah was asked that what should they answer him, Rasulullah told them to say, Allahu A'la Wajal. Allah is the high, Allah is the most high. Now, in this surah, the beginning of the surah, Allah Azza wa is commanding Rasulullah and of course to all of us to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the, the Most High, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the one who is comparatively, meaning He is higher in some cases and not higher in other cases. Allah is the Most High. He is the Most High in all senses. Allah is the creator of everything. Allah is the one who is knowledgeable of everything. Allah is all wise. When we talk about the, 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 the Tawheed, al and the Uluhiyya, uh, uh, we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is most high. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, he is the, he is the Rabb, he is the master, he is the creator, he is the regulator of all the affairs. That's the part of Rububiyya. And when it comes to Uluhiyya, we worship Allah alone and we do not make partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in anything. And we don't even say that not only Allah is the Most High, we don't say that there are some things is equal to Allah in any sense. Allah is above all. In all His names and attributes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all and there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the thing that we should always remember. And the kuffar of the Mecca and even in general the people out there, nobody actually disagree. Most of the people do not disagree with the rububiyya part of it. Most of the people agree that Allah is the one who is the creator of everything. That is Allah Azza wa Jalla says, man khalaqahum la Allah fa'anna yufakun. That if you ask them who has created them, they will say Allah. They will say Allah. Similarly, Allah Azza wa Jalla says that قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَمَّا يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَلَا بُصَارَ وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيَّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهُ فَقُولَ فَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal says, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who provides you for you from the sky and the earth? Or who owns hearing and sight? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala telling the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell them, say Muhammad to them. 
And who brings out the living from the dead? And brings out the dead from the living? And who disposes the affairs? They will say, Allah. Say, will you not then be afraid? Allah, Allah's punishment? Don't be. Don't you have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So when it comes to understanding that who is the creator, who is our Rabb, most of the people will say that. But the problem comes in when we talk about worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. All sorts of shirk come, shirk come in, they start making partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people start making equals to Allah and in some cases, na'udhu billah, they try to make things above Allah azza wa jal. So just to say that we believe in Allah is not sufficient. Just to understand Allah is the creator is not sufficient. Allah alone has to be worshipped as well. What does that mean when I'm saying that? We have to remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one to be worshipped, not only in the masjid, not in front when we bow down only. He needs to be worshipped in all affairs of our lives. So we cannot say in one hand, that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then we say, or oh, the Congress, or the Senate, or the Parliament, or this Prime Minister, or that, pre- that President, or this Constitution, or that Constitution, or whichever country which is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is equal to what Allah has brought, or above than what Allah has brought, that will be considered as a shirk. We have lost this idea in our minds, unfortunately, because of the secularism has become so prevalent in the society, we can't even see that, we can't even sense that. Isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَحُكْمُ الْجَاهِلِيَّةُ يَبْغُونَ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمَ لِقَوْمِ يُقِنُونَ Do you want the judgment from the jahiliyyah, from the ignorance? Meaning, if you're looking for other than Allah Azza wa Jal, you are going towards jahiliyyah, you're going towards ignorance. And who is a better judge than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Whose judgment is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Similarly, Allah Azza wa Jal said, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ Who is the best judge? Isn't that Allah Azza wa Jal? Yes, it is. And then we talk about, this, the, the surah continues on. It says, سَبِّحْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْعَالَىٰ الَّذِي خَلَقَ فَسَوَّى Who is this Rabb we are talking about? الَّذِي خَلَقَ فَسَوَّى وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى He is the one who is a khaliq. He is the one who created everything. He is the one who created everything in the best proportion. He is the one who not only created everything, but he created it with the right measure. And then he gave the guidance as well. There are, there are the creations of Allah Azza wa Jal who do not have the ikhtiyar, they don't have the choice. But the humans were given the choice. So there are things that which we don't have the choice. For example, when, when we're born, when we die, what is, how much risk are we going to get in this dunya? What is our ajal? We don't have that. But besides that, there are actions Allah Azza wa Jal has given us the ikhtiyar, the choice. And we are accountable for those choices. But there are creations like shams, like night, like day. They go by as Allah has created. They don't have any choice in that case. And Allah created us all with the best proportion. الَّذِي أَحْسَنَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَهُ وَبَدَى خَلْقَ الْإِنسَانِ مِنْ طِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, who, that Allah is the one who has created everything in the best form. And He created man from the teen, from the clay. And in Surah Teen, Allah Azza wa Jal says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِينَ and we have created man in the best mold, the best shape, the best form. So shame on those people who are trying to say that evolution is part of Islam, meaning the humans are the, 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 the generation from the monkeys and the apes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we created Adam from clay. He did not create an ape or a monkey and that turned into a human being later on. Allah created the things the best form. When people talk about evolution, they try to say as if the people are evolving and certain people are different, uh, of higher, uh, they have evolved more than the others. Or this race is better than the other race. Na'udhu billah. 
Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَخْوِينَ We have created the man in the best form. وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى Who has created with the best measure and then guided us also. He did not leave us without the guidance. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالَّذِي أَخْرَجَ الْمَرْعَى فَجَعْلَهُ غُثَاءً أَحْوَى And Allah, He's that, the Rabb, that we are supposed to do the tasbih, we're supposed to glorify that Allah has commanded us. He is the one who creates all sorts of vegetations, the grass or the plants and the trees and on and on and on, the one that we get benefits from. He is the creator. Isn't that the one that worthy of worship? That we survive by? Isn't the one supposed to be glorified? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. And then the very same plantation and all, they become, they become dark, stubble. فَجَعْلَهُ غُثَاءً أَحْوَى And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى And we shall make you recite the Qur'an so O Muhammad sallallahu shall not forget it. See this ayah is a very clear indicator that this is from the very early stages of the Meccan era. Because in the beginning of the da'wah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tried to recite the Qur'an fast so he will not forget. Allah is assuring Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this Qur'an will not be forgotten from you. Don't worry, this is our job. That it will be protected. The Qur'an is protected by Allah azza wa jal. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna nahu lahafidun. We have revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed this book, this dhikr, and we are the one who will protect it. Then Allah said, إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ That except the one that Allah wishes, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, مَا نَنْسَقْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِيهَا نَأْتِ بِخَيْرِ مِثْلِهَا خَيْرٌ مِنْهَا وَمِثْلِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that there are Allah is the one who abrogates the ayat. And if it makes you forget, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's doing that. And He will bring the similar or the better ayat than that. Alam ta'alam anna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Don't you know that Allah has the qudra, Allah has the all power and everything? Then the interesting ayah comes, إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَى Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows everything. The one which is hidden and the one which is apparent. So when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Rabb that we are commanded, the Al-A'la, the one we are commanded to do the Tasbih, this is the Rabb that has the information about everything. The things that we, which are hidden from us and the things which are apparent to us. And we know that today, the data has become the biggest power. And all the governments in the world, they're gathering data about everything about the people going after masajid to find out what's going on in that masjid or that masjid. Whether in the Muslim lands or non-Muslim lands. Allah is saying, they're trying to find out what you say from your mouth, or what the actions that you do. That's all people can see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, He is aware of everything. Whether we see it or not, whether we sense it or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of what's in our minds what when we're sitting here and listening to the khutbah or giving the khutbah. Allah azza wa jal is all aware. Hence, He is the one that should be, must be glorified. The tasbih of Allah is the one, is the only one that is deserving of the tasbih. Not anything else. We cannot say that the other things are better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including when we talk about ruling over the people that only belongs to Allah azza wa jal. It does not belong to the human being. And any one of us who thinks a human is capable of coming up with the laws and rules and regulations for the people to live same or better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is committing a shirk. This is one of the basics of Islam. Then not to make partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any of his attributes. When we talk about rububiyya, when we talk about aluhiyya, when we talk about asma'u sifat of Allah azza wa jal, it has to be seen from all the angles. Allah has created everything and there is nothing like it. 
There is nothing equal to Allah. There is nothing better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, sometimes we use certain terminologies to define human beings, but human beings are nowhere equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anyone who thinks this way, he is committing a shirk. A shirk is one of those sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive. Remember that. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ لَا لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَعِ الْمُسْلَمِينَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ وَفُر